So did you guys hear the news? Yeah, Six Flags actually is building a new dive coaster in one of their parks. That's fun. Oh, let's take a look at the concept art. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is fun. Wow, that looks fun. Yeah, two, three drops in a row? That's sick. Oh, oh wait. This is their this is their stock price. Oh, oh, geez. <laughs> oh, you tell me. Um, I think investors are at a loss. At least one analyst on Wall Street said we, we didn't think it could get, could get any worse, and it just did. So this is the worst drop in history for the stock, down 18%, down to multi-year lows. Doesn't look good on a day chart or a one-year chart or just about any chart for that matter. So 2019 was a pretty god-awful year for Six Flags. Just last month in February, they announced their year-end earnings, and oh boy, <laughs> it is awful. They start the report off by saying all the nice stuff, the things that are quote-unquote good, like their revenue increasing 2% from last year to up to uh, $1.5 billion, and also their attendance going up by 2%. So, wow, that's good, right? But... And then when they get into the rest of uh, what happened in 2019, it's not very good. They then go on to say that emissions per capita decreased by 44 cents and in-park spending per capita dropped by 23 cents. So not only are people spending less money in the parks, but they're also spending less money on tickets. Just to add more salt to the wound, they also mentioned that there was a 3% drop in sponsorship, international agreements, and accommodations revenue. So you may be saying to yourself right now, well, you know, I mean, yeah, sure, that's all bad, but like, you know, attendance went up, revenue went up, surely they're still doing okay. Well, <laughs> let's talk about their net income for the year. It was $179 million. Okay, sure, it sounds like a lot, right? It was a decrease of $97 million, or 35%, from 2018. Yikes. Six Flags cites the reason for why their net income took such a dive was because they had to pay a lot in dividends and because they had a full year of operating expenses for their five parks they acquired in June 2018 and $10 million in write-offs from the China deal that fell through in their planned parks there. Wait a minute, so you're telling me the five parks that Six Flags acquired in June of 2018, Wet n Wild Splash Town, Wet n Wild Phoenix, Darien Lake, Frontier City, and Whitewater Bay, all those did nothing for their revenue, and just hurt their net income. Oh my. Well, you know, I mean, we've kind of known that the strategy of buying new parks when you can't even take care of your existing parks probably was not the best idea, and obviously it's backfired here. I think that really, it seems like almost every move Six Flags does nowadays is just to impress the shareholders. I mean, let's just look a couple months back when Six Flags tried to buy Cedar Fair. That wasn't that fun, right? Like, Six Flags... The offer was like a little bit of money and mostly stock because Six Flags didn't even have enough money to buy them. It's just stupid moves like this, which is hurting Six Flags because they're trying to impress the stockholders. It's actually embarrassing. And the funny part about the Cedar Fair thing is that that actually made their stock dive down even further because Cedar Fair said no. <laughs> If Six Flags really wants to buy Cedar Fair, they need to offer a much larger premium. And I don't think they can afford it. KeyBank says they might need to pay $85 a share, and that seems prohibitive to me, especially since Six Flags already has a debt-laden balance sheet. Either way, though, a lot has changed for the amusement park stock since I told you to buy Cedar Fair at 52 bucks in August. Although the stock has given up most of its gains since the deal news broke, Six Flags is still down substantially, though. The stock's been hammered. So how about we flash back to that time earlier in 2019, and let's see what then-CEO Jim Reed Anderson had to say about the Cedar Fair takeover situation and how the company was performing at the time. Attendance was an all-time high for the quarter and year-to-date. Revenue, an all-time high quarter, year-to-date. EBITDA in the quarter, an all-time high for the quarter. So all the numbers are very positive. Expectations were higher than that. So what Jim here uh, forgets to tell you is that the reason why the revenue and the attendance and the EBITDA is up at record highs is because this is the first third quarter that those five parks they acquired in June are in operation. And the other important thing about that that he forgets to mention is that they're actually hurting the net income as we see here in the year-end report. So no, Jim, it wasn't expectations. It was that the company is doing bad. Earlier this year, you'd made a bid for uh, Cedar Fair, a, a competitor. They have declined the offer. Are you going back to the table to see if you can sweeten the pot? So let's be crystal clear. We don't comment on rumors, which is what this is, and we never comment on M&A. But I do want to address very clearly that there is no bid 
for any company that's out there. We're not in the process of negotiating anything. So just for reference here, uh, this was after Six Flags stock took an absolute tumble after Cedar Fair declined their offer. And it's also after Cedar Fair stock shot up thanks to that. So... Of course, Jim Reed Anderson can come in here and say, no way we did that. No, that was never a part of the plan. Of course, it was a rumor. What do you mean? Yeah, guy's a politician, man. I'm glad he's out. I'm glad he's out. I'm going to be honest. I know he's a meme. I know he makes really good uh, announcement videos. But man, this guy just says whatever the stockholders want to hear, dude. He doesn't tell it to your face. So anyways, Mike Spanos, uh, good luck, man. Yeah, so we lead in innovation in the industry. It's in our DNA. Holiday in the Park is a Christmas version that we have yeah. of this. Fright Fest is the Halloween version, and we have it at 15 parks. And it's been growing every year, and the fourth quarter has now become one of our strongest quarters. And we gain our most increases in attendance and revenue generally in the fourth quarter. So it's booming, and you should go visit because it's so exciting. It really is great. It's my favorite time of the year. You know, Jim, it's funny you mentioned the fourth quarter being one of your best quarters. Let's take a look at how the fourth quarter did for you guys. You guys made $261 million in revenue, which was a $9 million decrease or a 3% decrease from last year which you guys cite as being due to a 3% decrease in attendance and a 1% decrease in sponsorship and international agreements and accommodations revenue. Oh boy. But just wait, there's more. The fourth quarter didn't even yield a net income. In fact, it yielded a net loss of $11 million compared to the net income they had in the fourth quarter last year of $79 million, a decrease of $91 million. Wow, that's incredible. So I think it's safe to say that that booming fourth quarter that Jim was talking about here, yeah, it didn't show up this time around. As you guys may have already figured out, as a result of these bad results, the stock price took an absolute plunge, with the stock price starting up in the 50s earlier in the year and ending in the 20s now, in the beginning of 2020. Oh, and what's that? There's one more bit of terrible news coming in? Oh, great. Uh, I didn't know it could get any worse. Uh, the CFO of the company, the chief financial officer that is, is going to retire in August. That's great. Um, but you know what? It's funny about it is that they actually did a better job at announcing this than Disney did with Bob Iger. I mean, what happened there? He resigns immediately? Jeez. I mean, who would have thought Six Flags would have done something better than Disney? That's kind of crazy. So now you may be wondering, well, what is Six Flags going to do down the line to help improve the company, prevent it from going bankrupt a second time? Well, for one, they cited one of the issues why their net income was not good is because of the dividend. So they completely slashed the dividend, cutting it down to about $1 per share every year, when before that it was lower about like 3 or $4 per share every year. And now it's just absolutely abysmal. But I understand, need to be done. You guys are losing money in the fourth quarter. You need to save money on the dividend. Makes sense. But surely that's not the only thing they're going to do to help fix things. So let's take a look at what their strategic plan is going forward. Oh, and and what's that? They they don't have one. No, no, no. That can't be right. They surely they must have one. Oh, no, no, right here. You see, look, look, look. The company will host an investor day on May 28th, 2020 to share the new strategic plan. Oh, my. They don't know what they're going to do going forward yet. Oh, boy. Okay, well... You know, listen, if you're going to make us wait about, what, four months until we get to hear what your plan is going forward, that better be a pretty good plan. Listen, dude, I don't want to see Six Flags go out of business. I don't want to see them go bankrupt. They have some pretty good coasters. They have some pretty good parks. And honestly, what would I do on this channel if I couldn't talk trash about Six Flags anymore? I mean, that would just be a disaster. But, you know, the company has a new CEO in Mike Spanos. They don't have Jim Politician Anderson anymore, so thank God. And hopefully come May 28th, that actually is a good strategic plan moving forward and they can fix this company and get it going back over. Obviously, the coronavirus right now is not helping its situation anymore. It's hurt its stock even further. But, you know, beyond that, we're hoping things get better. If you want my advice, I would say sell those parks. You mentioned in the report that the five parks you acquired in June 2018 did nothing for your net revenue and, if anything, were a negative towards your net income. And you know what I would do? I would say, don't even stop there. I would sell even more of your lower level performing parks. Honestly, right now, what you guys need to do is consolidate and focus on your main biggest performing parks because you've expanded way too quickly and you can't handle all these parks in your repertoire right now. It's just hurting you more than it's helping. 
So if that means you don't get a seller for some parks and you have to close some parks, Astro World them, honestly, I would not hesitate to do it. I know it sucks, but just to keep the company alive, I think that that's the best strategy moving forward. So with that all being said, the future of Six Flags is uh, not looking so bright, but you know, all we could do is hope that they get it right and they figure out how to fix this problem. I'll see you guys next time and go big. Go Six Flags.